Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm coming at you with a little bit of a natural beat today because today is not about the makeup, it's about the behind the scenes of Instagram today. I asked you guys what kind of videos you wanna see and a ton of you guys told me that Instagram videos are super tricky, you're trying to figure out how to get the quality to look good, where to find good music. You had a lot of concerns about that, so I wanted to create a video with all of that information in one to help you guys out. So if you guys are not familiar, Instagram is notorious for having a bunch of beauty videos some that are a little more obscure than others but nevertheless they have become a huge trend and a lot of people partake in them so today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how I personally edit my Instagram videos the behind the scenes of it all program I use my music all that good stuff will be in this video so if you guys are interested go ahead and just keep watching Alright guys, so to start off this video, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of background on the program that I use to edit my videos. So what I like to use is a program called Final Cut Pro. Now I'm not going to tell you to download the pirated version off of YouTube when you search it and find a reliable one with good reviews, but it is a good idea to throw out there, save some coin, you know. I find that Final Cut Pro is the most user-friendly, simple program to use and create great Instagram video content. Most Instagram pages that I'm friends with and follow use it just because it's super easy and simple to create really engaging video content. So I definitely recommend finding a version for yourself. But for this video, I'm going to be using Final Cut Pro because that's what I'm familiar with and that is what I use to edit my Instagram video tutorials. Alright guys, so starting off, we have my home screen right here. We're just going to go down to this little colorful icon right here and click it. That's the Final Cut Pro logo. I'm just going to open that up. I have version 10.3.4 if you're curious. So when you open Final Cut Pro, it kind of looks a little something like this. I'm currently filming this video, so this is currently in the timeline. But we are going to start a new video, of course. So first off, we're going to go to File, New, Library. And this is where we're going to keep all the information on our Instagram video. So just title it something related to your video. So I'm just going to title mine Summer because it's kind of like a summertime look sort of deal. Saving it to my SD card just to save space on my computer because my MacBook doesn't have very much space. Then click Save and it creates a library. Also, side note, um, over here you can modify your settings of where things are stored. So I store pretty much everything on my SD card just because it saves space on my computer and if you're a Mac user, you know Apple does not like to give us very much space. So yeah, so I save everything to an SD card. Highly recommend that if you're gonna get into the videos because they do take up a lot of space. So just gonna click OK. And we're gonna get into setting up our project. Now this part is pretty important because if you do not set this up correctly, the dimensions could be off and you will lose a lot of video quality when you upload to Instagram. So this part is very important. So we're gonna go to new project and I'm just gonna title that summer IG video. You can call it whatever you want. And for video format, this is the area where things get tricky. So video format, we're going to go down to custom. Now, if you want to have a square Instagram video, it's going to be the same length on both sides. It's going to be 1080 by 1080. Doing this will ensure that your video retains all the quality when you go to upload it to Instagram. But if you want to do a portrait video like I'm going to be doing today, that's when it's a little bit longer in length. It's 1080 by 1350 to, for the dimensions to keep that quality intact for when you upload to Instagram. After that's done, I'm going to change my rate to 29.97p because that's what my camera records as. Um, you can just set it to whatever your camera records in or just leave it as the one that it gives you and it should be fine. So after we've got our project panel set up, I'm not going to touch any of the other settings and we're going to click OK. So as you can see here, this is where our video will be stored, this little file right here. And now it's time to import the footage. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so now what we're gonna do is talk about importing footage. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to File, Import, Media. And from here, I have a bunch of footage and you wanna be sure that your SD card or wherever you're importing your footage from is selected. So these clips with the pink background right here are the video that I'm going to be editing today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select all of those. And after I have all of those selected, you can just hold down shift and click on all the ones that you want to import. I'm gonna go ahead and click import selected. And then here, they're all going to load into my Final Cut Pro library, so I have them to work with. Also, I'm gonna recommend again, an SD card or a external hard drive is very important when you're working with videos because they do take up a lot of space and it's just very nice to have some extra storage on the side. And after our footage is finished importing, as you can see here, it's loading. If you work on your project while it's importing, it can go a little slowly, so I recommend just giving it a minute, kind of get to like 90%-ish of the way, and then you can begin dragging in your footage and editing it down. So I will show you guys that once all of my footage is imported in the next step. All right, so now that you see this little pop-up, that means that all of our footage is successfully imported. So I'm just gonna click close. And now we're gonna begin slicing and dicing up this footage. I'm just gonna kind of speed through this because this does take me the longest, is selecting pieces of the footage that I want to include in my Instagram video. So basically the system I'm doing over and over again is just dragging a clip in so it's kind of sideways. Then I go in and turn it to negative 90 degrees so it is straight up and down. This is only for portraits. If it's square, you kind of don't really have to worry about this. Also on every single clip I drag in, I'm pulling down on that little wavelength portion underneath my video clip that's the audio I'm just pulling it down because it turns it to zero and we don't want any background noise in our Instagram tutorial video because we just want it to be primarily whatever song we choose to be in the background of this video we don't want any distracting audio so I'm getting rid of the audio on all the clips that I drag in but then I use the scale in the toolbar to just kind of scale it up and center the clip in the frame so that all of the space is filled with just my video clip. It's kind of easier to watch than for me to explain. I hope this is making sense for you guys. So yeah, I'm just kind of doing the same system over and over again and collecting a couple seconds of clips for each step of my makeup routine that I'm doing for this Instagram video. And then I'm constantly going back over and re-watching it, being sure that things make sense, seeing if I need to make the clip longer and shorter. All that kind of meticulous stuff that comes with doing Instagram tutorial videos. And then in this clip, you can see me using the transform tool to kind of arrange that clip to where I want it to be. So me applying the fake tan onto my skin is perfectly in frame. I absolutely love this feature that Final Cut Pro has because you can really focus in on those details of the video and be sure that they don't get lost or missed out on when your viewers are seeing your Instagram video. So definitely play around with the transform tool, zoom in, zoom out, move your clip around and try to get the best angle that you can. And then once I'm happy with all of my clips and I get my video to the length of one minute or 60 seconds, we are gonna go ahead and move on to the transitions. So now that our Instagram video is all sliced and diced and at the correct time limit of one minute, we're gonna add in our transitions. These kind of add a little bit of pizzazz to your Instagram video and make it interesting for your viewer to watch. So to get to your transitions on Final Cut Pro, you're gonna come to this gray menu bar and it is this little icon right here to the far right. You're gonna click that. So this is your list of transitions. So Final Cut Pro comes standard with a few transitions like the light, or the blurs these all come standard when you download Final Cut Pro however if you're like me and you get bored of the Final Cut Pro transitions and you want your video to kind of stand out from the rest I highly recommend downloading new ones from YouTube that's how I got my different more interesting transitions in my Instagram videos so all you have to do to find these is search FCP transitions free download FCP stands for Final Cut Pro and you'll get a bunch of results like this and you're just gonna download these and put them in your 
transitions folder there's kind of a little bit of a process that goes into it i can link a video down below that will show you guys how to install new transitions to final cut pro so if you're interested in this definitely go down to the link below i'll have it in the description for you guys to give you that information because i know it can be frustrating and i'd rather a professional tell you guys how to do it than me who kind of really doesn't even know how i did it <laughs> to be honest typically i'll add in transitions right when i'm showing a brand new product so each product that i use i'll add a transition at the front sometimes i'll throw one in between long clips of me just blending my eyeshadow to make it a little bit more fun and interesting and i always add them at the end when i'm showing the final reveal of whatever look i created to make it a little bit more interesting and create that full like ta-da moment i guess you could say so to add in a transition all you do is select whatever transition you want you're going to click on it and drag it into your timeline and put it in between whatever clips you want the transition in between it's gonna take a minute for it to render if you have these little white dots on top that means it's taking some time to render and then eventually you will get a look at what your transition is going to look like you can go through and make it longer like this or shorter like this for a more abrupt transition it just kind of depends on whatever look you're going for so i definitely recommend just taking some time to play around seeing what kind of effects you like and what kind of transitions you think suit your video best All right guys, so now I have my transitions in and they just add a little bit more something extra to my video. Of course, you do not have to add transitions. This is all personal preference. I just think that they make videos a little bit more interesting to watch. So I was gonna show you guys how to add in little popping effects or circle effects around eyeshadows to kinda guide your viewer a little more when they're watching your video, but I'm kinda running out of time. This video is getting a little long and I don't wanna bore you guys. So if you guys want me to do a part two to this video of little things that you can add into your Instagram videos to make them more interesting and eye-catching, definitely let me know down in the comments below or by liking this video, and I will definitely make that video for you guys. So now we are going to focus on adding in music to our video to give it that little bit more of an interesting flair, because if it's just silent like this, it's going to be a little bit boring so what we're gonna do is go to our good old pal youtube and we're going to find some no copyright music so one thing you can do is if you have a song in particular that you want for example if you wanted ariana grande breathe in as a song in your video you would just have to search that song name along with remix at the end and find a good remix of that song to add into your video because if you do not add a remix you will get copywritten and instagram will take your video down which is very frustrating and annoying and you do not want that to happen another thing you can do is if you don't have a particular song in mind you can go to no copyright sounds this is kind of my go-to for background music um, they upload constantly like every single day new little songs they are only about a minute to three minutes long so they're kind of made for Instagram beauty tutorials so they're really easy to just download and add into your videos so I highly recommend this channel on YouTube if you do find a song that you like for example let's say that this is the song that i want to use in my video i'm going to copy that url and i'm going to go to youtube mp3 this is the address up here i'll have it linked down below as well and all you do is paste that youtube url into here select mp3 and then press convert and this will convert this YouTube video into an mp3 so you can use the song in your video. So this just downloads the song right here. And then all you have to do is just click that and drag that into your video. And then just adjust it so that like wherever the beat drops or the song gets the most interesting it lines up with like you showing your final look. I don't know, that's just what I always do, but... You guys can do whatever you want, but yeah, it's super easy to add in no copyright music using Final Cut Pro. So now that we have our music in our video, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how you can add your watermark to your video so that repost pages do not steal credit for your work. Okay, so to add a watermark to your video, you're going to go to this button right here. This is your text button. 
you're gonna click that and Final Cut Pro comes with a bunch of built-in text options um, so you just kind of have to play around with them and see which one you like the best again the same sort of idea as transitions you can download other ones from YouTube and stuff like that I can have a video linked down below for you guys if you guys are interested in that so I will typically use glow or highlights in my videos just kind of depends on what I'm feeling and you just simply grab it and bring it down onto your timeline and I will start it not right at the beginning but in the middle of my first transition right here and then bring it all the way to the end I don't like to bring it all the way to the beginning of my video because I don't want the watermark to show up before my video starts playing I don't know that's just personal preference you guys can do what you wish so then to change the title text you simply just click on this purple box and you can click here and write your username and I typically like to use Higano Sans as my font at W2 to make it kind of bold and I will shrink that down a little bit and I'll go down here to tracking and space out the letters a little bit you can kind of just play around with this and see what sizing you like and then I'll bring it down to the bottom portion of my video probably about here and then we will go into this little icon and go and change the opacity and make it a little bit lighter so that this watermark doesn't get too distracting and cover up any of the stuff that we're doing but it will still be visible enough on the video so that if repost pages do repost your video and don't give you proper credit people will still know where the video is coming from and be able to find your page and support you as an artist so i definitely recommend doing this for any sort of content you're producing whether it be pictures or video so definitely don't forget to add in your watermark so now that we have our watermark in it is time to export our video all right so i suggest doing a final run through of your video and being sure that you're happy with it and once you are and you're ready to export and take it to Instagram, what we're gonna do is go up here to this button right here. This is your export button. Click that and we're gonna go to Apple Devices 1080p. Now this works best if you're someone who has all Apple devices. If you have an iPhone, if you're using a MacBook, this works best. Um, I don't use a PC and I don't have an Android, so I don't know what settings work best, but this is what I have and what keeps the quality of my videos looking good. So I'm just going to click Apple Devices 1080p here and everything looks good and we're just going to go ahead and click share. And up here is our little loading bar and after this reaches 100% it will be completely exported and when our video is exported it will show up in our iTunes actually because it's exporting to Apple devices so by doing this we're keeping it transferring between Apple devices which then retains the quality my friend Chris taught me this so shout out to Chris I will have him linked down below he's really talented so all you do is you go to the movies section of your iTunes and click on home videos and this is where all of the videos will appear that you export and once your video is successfully exported you will get this little pop-up that says share successful so we're just going to click close and when you pull up your itunes and search for the name of your video right here is the video that we just exported so to get this from here to your phone we're going to use airdrop so to get to airdrop you go to go and then click right here airdrop be sure your phone is unlocked and on as you can see here's my iPhone connected to airdrop and all we're gonna do is take this and drag it to my phone and it'll load up and then your phone will successfully receive your video and it will just automatically pop up on your phone screen you don't have to do any texting or emailing to yourself so it retains all the quality straight from your computer to your phone and we have all the sizing correct and everything so we just go ahead and upload straight to Instagram and your video is complete. 
All right, guys, so that is it for this video today. I hope that you guys enjoyed and hopefully learned something. If you guys have any questions or concerns, definitely leave them down in the comments below and I will try to help you as much as I can. Also, if you guys want a video on the behind the scenes of me actually filming my Instagram videos, like how I have my camera settings, my lighting, my backdrops, all that kind of information, definitely let me know down in the comments below because that kind of goes into the whole Instagram tutorial thing as well. I can definitely give you guys some tips in there. Don't forget to follow me on social media, underscore McDrew on Twitter and McDrew on Instagram. So I can show you guys some of my Instagram videos. Maybe you guys can get inspiration and I can just chat with you guys when I am not here uploading. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the bell so you are notified when I upload that next video. Thank you guys so much for watching again and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye guys.